as contamination from the restrooms as long as we keep them closed and everybody uses their own facilities. Um, I have no intention as of this point to allow any tent campers since we don't have the restrooms open or any um, transients. I think that can come into play on the 24th, but with the, with the guidelines, with the CDC guidelines and everything else in the restrooms, it seems to be too big of an issue to, to, to take that risk of opening the restrooms now. So I think the best guideline right now is to only seasonals or anyone here that's here more than 30 days. And they understand the rules that, hey, six feet apart. We all know the, the guidelines as far as that goes. And then you have to use your own facilities. That's for the campground. I'm thinking <clears throat> the beach itself, um, based on last year's activity on the beach and the fact that some of the public thinks it's okay to bury diapers in the sand. Um, I think the best policy, and I, I talked to Bose from the health department also about the beach. And he seemed to agree with me that our best thing to do right now would be to leave the beach closed until the 4th of July to um, anybody that wants to just use the beach as a beach. My issue is that um, we do have piers on the beach um, and I would like to open it up just to the boaters with the clarification that they take their vehicle, get out of their vehicle, go directly to their boat. When they come back off the beat, off the water, they go directly to their vehicle and um, get lost, basically. I don't know, how, don't know how any other way to say it, but you know, hey, don't congregate on the beach. Um, and the, again, the beach restrooms will be closed at least until July 4th and that this thing keeps going. Um, if I don't want the beach to be uh, contention for anybody getting sick, you know, an, an issue for anybody to get sick out there. So I think right now the best thing to do is probably keep it closed till July 4th until the, everything is opened up and we get to stage five. Okay. Does, does anyone on the board have any questions about the campground or the beach this summer? No one? Um, I have questions. Okay. Okay. Number one, I want to know, do you have campers in there now? The permanent campers and seasonal campers are in here now, yes. Okay. Do you have people actually living on the campground and you have them there all year round is that what you're telling me no nobody stays here all year round when do these people come in um we have uh it, and we sent letter to to marty um there was three people that were here in april started their self-quarantine before this coronavirus crackdown started and in accordance with the governor's guidelines, if they were here uh, prior to his shutdown, they could stay. So there was three campers that were here. May 4th, the guidelines changed to where it's all seasonal campers or uh, permanent campers, as they call it, whatever they want to call it. Um, it could be open up to uh, seasonals. And those are the only people that are here now. It's just seasonals. We're not taking anybody off the street, um, just seasonals currently. Now that could change on the 24th. We can start allowing um, overnighters, but at this point, I don't even want to do that because we're going to keep the restrooms closed. And again, with tenters, um, no access to tenders because they're not going to have access to restrooms. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long that's going to play out. I want to make sure that people are safe. So the longer that, you know, this keeps going on and until they release all the guidelines and stuff, I want to make sure that everybody's safe. Okay. Have you done any upgrading with the electric in that park prior to, to the now? There have been 50 amp uh, upgrades that have been installed um, back, I guess it was 2015. 
we've got about 36 50 amp um, sites in here now. Out of how many total sites? 60. 60 sites, you've done about a little over half, you're saying? Yeah, about 36. And at the time when they put this out there to start upgrading them, so I told the, the uh, park board at that time that I only want to install them as we need them because it just doesn't make sense to put 50 amp services on every site if they're not necessary. Okay, so what do you want now? You want to increase that 50 amp service to more sites? Is that what you're uh, asking? No, the issue is now, well, actually the issue is the way this park was set up, it had a thousand amps of service, okay? Um, a couple of years ago, we had some issues with some, per, some circuit breakers that were um, rated at 250 amp and they could be, the wiring could support 350. The um, back half of the campground, because the distance from where the main circuit breaker is to where the panel is, that line, it, was running over 100% usage, which is a hazard. Of course it is. So what we're trying to do is get, I've never had an issue with the front half of the campground. It's the back half because of the distance from the main lead back to the, the uh, pole, back to the, the circuit breaker panel that's back there in the back half. So what we're trying to do is just get the power to the back half so it's sufficient so that we don't have, we were having brownouts because the voltage was dropping below 108 volts. Oh, okay. sir, how did that get that way? How did, how did you allow that to get that way? How did I allow what? To have more service added into BART than that line was going to even carry. Sounds like you created a hazard. No, this was this was created by the addition of the 50 amp services that right. the park board asked correctly. us to do. It was not done correctly, apparently. Do you have a specific bid for all this? I do, and I think the county has it. You have, do we have that, Mr. Ballard? Yes, uh, let me see if I've got it here. <clears throat> I, what I'm trying to figure out is how how you allowed all these 50 amp services to get installed, and and it's it's already overdoing the line. It should have never been that way. It should never never got that way. And you're exactly right. Nobody nobody paid attention um, until we started having hot summer days, and we realized that. Um, the power was insufficient. The whole campground power situation right now, um, in order to have um, 50 amp service at every site requires, I think I put it on a note somewhere to them, requires 3,600 amps of service in order to supply that. Currently we have 1,500 I think it's 15, no, it's 1,400, two, 350 amps, seven and seven is 1,400 amps of service in the campground. So the campground has been insufficiently, um, the main power coming into the campground has been insufficient for pretty much forever. But nobody ever paid attention to it until I had some people put this watchdog on their camper. And then we started noticing that Hey, at 108 volts, they shut off and then it comes back on and then it shuts them off because the voltage was dropping below 108 volts. Okay, this 36, sites, this 36 sites that you said were already upgraded, who did that work and why, weren't, why didn't they check to make sure they could supply that? Most of that work was done by Bussy. And then we added um, a few more in the campground. Okay, well, it just sounds like it's kind of a potential dangerous thing 
and you have the public in there along that somebody could get hurt or fried or or uh possibly even a fire or well that's with with that's why we're looking to get the upgrade for the power so that we don't have the low power situation to where we have issues with uh, low voltage which the lower the voltage the higher the amps which creates issues that's right okay so you're asking now to have the county pay for an upgrade yeah to the main power which, which should have be, been done before before all this and power to the, all the campsites should have been done that should have been the first step in my mind at that time nobody knew i guess uh, i guess Chris, nobody know. checked because even when bussy installed that we only had a thousand amps and at that time it should have been upgraded two years ago we had uh, the guy from I can't think of his name two years or three years ago um, come out here and inspect things and that's when he told us about you know we, we had two breakers at 250 amps those got upgraded to 350 um, which the line can carry and then we started noticing that we were having issues well when we have issues I can't get an electrician out here on a, a busy weekend to come out here and check it. So I, what I did is I clamped the lines and I read the power going through the lines, how many amps we were drawn and we were over um, what the line could carry. And that's when we noticed and that's when we went back to them and say, okay, now we need to look at um, upgrading at least the back half of the campground to make sure that it can carry the load that we need back there. Okay, I, I think I you've answered remember. my questions. I can't remember his name <clears throat> up there in town. I think it's on the paperwork. I don't have it with me. Um, excuse me, Larry, I, um, some of my past minutes, um, when this was brought up, uh, it said that we had actually stated to decline any additional up amps that the park board, that, that we had voted to decline any additional ones that weren't already, but we would do the, the upkeep on the ones that we had installed. That's what I have in the minutes from there. From when? Um, this was actually the, the last meeting that we were all together because then we first made a motion and it passed and then um, it was tabled, another motion to table it till the next meeting. And that's and when I asked them to reconsider yes. the upgrade based on the fact that they had paid for it in the past. Yes, yeah, that's what it was. That's why it's still up for vote so that you guys had, I gave more information to them about what the county required and adding the 15 amp services and then um, why they should, should reconsider their vote. Because this is a capital improvement for the park um, to upgrade the power. Larry, yeah. was, was the inspector Terry Stevenson, does that sound right? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. I thought it was Terry Stevenson. Yeah. That's it. it certainly was. If, if we don't do the upgrade, how many sites are you going to lose? Well, here's the issue. If, if, there, if we don't do the upgrade, basically on the hot summer days, I got to tell people that you can't run your air conditioner mm -hmm. or you you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is if we don't do the upgrade. I mean, you're not going to lose any campers then. Well, that's up for debate because why would somebody want to be at a campground that can't supply sufficient power to their camper? Could you possibly well, put a smaller unit on those? I'm sorry, Rosie. Um, could we possibly put smaller units on the ones that have a, a lower voltage? Uh, was that feasible? I don't know, maybe it, a, a little difference in price for. Right now, we just need to get enough power into the park 
works so that it can support a 60 site campground. And going backwards and saying, you know, yeah, this campground was set up as probably when this campground was set up, they were probably only 20 amp campers. Now, almost everything out there is 50 amp. Now, did they use 50 amp? No, they don't use 50 amp, but they're getting closer and closer. Even the 30 amp models right now, if they use their air conditioner, their microwave and their electric hot water heater, they're over their 30 amp limit. And I have people call me all the time. I blew my breaker. I said, well, if you have your air conditioner, your hot water heater on, your microwave on, you're over 30 amps. Of course, you're going to blow your breaker. I said, I cannot fix that because that's the way your camper was built. That's the way it's designed. You got 11 amps on your hot water heater. You've got um, your air conditioner draws 15 and it spikes up when it kicks on. And then your microwave, I believe, is 15 and spikes up when it first kicks on too. So right there, you're drawing 41 amps if all those are on at one time, even in a smaller camper. Okay. And almost everything today in this market today is all 50 amp. So if you if if the county wants to keep a viable campground going into the future past Callahan development, then this upgrade it either is going to be needed to be done now or be done later. Okay. Anybody want any more discussion or any more issue questions? Are we, are we ready to take a vote? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, what I, exactly. How are we going to have the motion presented? Either decline the additional 50 amps or um, I'm happy to make a motion once we decide <clears throat> to present it. Well, we're, we're either going to pay for the upgrade or we're not going to pay for the upgrade. That's my uh, understanding. Is, okay, is that what and, everyone understands? And I think that is exactly what we'd already voted on at one time. Which I understand, good. but Rosie, Rosie voted was part of that vote, or not Rosie, Kathy <laughs> was part of that vote, and then later we found out that Kathy couldn't be on the board, so I think we need to re-vote it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I agree. It needs to be revoted. But yeah. Yeah. So all those in favor of paying for the upgrade, say aye. Wait, do I have to make a motion? And again, I don't really require the county to pay for it. We're looking to pay for it and then just get a credit on our lease. Right, I understand. Yeah, somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to deny the credit and deny the payment. And in the future, they need to get the um, permission before they make an upgrade. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? No one's opposed. Okay. So the motion to uh, do the upgrade is denied at this point. So I'm, I'm just one curious question. So in the future, if he does go by the, uh, as things progress and we're making more money, if it can be represented then prior yep. and possibly be voted on then at that time. Correct. Right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, and that's what we did here. We're trying to do it prior before we make any improvements. Yeah. Could I make a comment, sir? I would like, personally, I would like to see a specific bid with what type of material, how much material, where are you going to put it in, and how it's going to be installed, and what time frame, because you're, you're, the paper I got says it's over a two-year period. I mean, that that's not even a doable thing for me. I'm not talking about 50-amp service. I'm talking about a main power line coming into the... NIPSCO will install the transformer at no charge. Um, the you might not have all the paperwork. It's a $7,800 um, bill for, um, and it's not even a bill. This is just um, um, an estimate on um, this improvement from, and I, I wish I could remember his name off the top of my head from in town there. Ron Warner. Ron, Warner. Warner. Right, Warner Electric. Um, <laughs> 
and this is what he told me. His prices are, he's only charging us 10% over his cost. So he's not trying to gouge anybody. He understands this is a county improvement deal. Um, and it, it, this includes um, NIPSCO install and transformer for free. The power box itself, which is the main panel with the circuit breakers, that's the most expensive thing on there was $4,400. And then there was wire, which had to be run to get to um, from one side of the street to the other. Um, and then from the panel itself back down to a couple of other sites there. So that way it could all connect to what was existing. It wasn't a total um, um, upgrade. This is just to get the power to those sites that we needed to get to. So that way we could split the back half of the campground. One half of the back half, which would be like 25% of it, I guess, 25% of the total would be on the existing line. And then 25% of the back half would be on an additional line. Yeah. Well, the board is denied it at this point. So I guess you're just going to have to uh, make some kind of accommodation to live with it the way it is for right now. Okay. Okay. I will say a more detailed estimate and plan in the future will make me more amenable to agreeing to something. So I think more details and, and, and a certainty that the upgrades are done well would make me feel better. Um, when you say in more detail, how much more detail than you do you need other than what Ron Warner put on there? Well, I, I'm not sure I saw that one. Um, some of the things I saw just basically had a cost estimate on there and it didn't exactly say what type of materials were being used. I would feel better about knowing what type of materials were being used so I could take it to someone else and see if they agreed with that as well. Okay. Yes. I'm pretty sure the one that I gave you from Ron Warner, his estimate had all that information. On. I'd have to look at that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was broken down. I think uh, it might be helpful to have two estimates uh, so we can make a comparison if you come back with a proposal in the future. Okay. I can try and get another estimate. Yeah. Okay. Thank now, you. My guidelines on the beach, are you guys acceptable with what I told you we're going to do on the beach, keep it closed to the fourth and only access um, to the beach will be for the boaters that are out there. That appears to be reasonable to me. I don't know what other, the other board members. I, I agree with that. I think those are reasonable. I think that was a pretty good plan. Okay. I, I think he's in, re, you know, substantial compliance with the governor's rules on that. Right. And of course we're always, you know, we're, we're looking, I mean, generally the county's policy has been to follow the state policy. You know, it, it is open to some adaptation, but it sounds reasonably close. And of course we have to watch for possible changes in what the state's policy are and be flexible. It could happen quicker, it could happen slower, but that seems like to me you're on top of that, Larry. Okay. Yeah, seems fine. Larry, I have a quick question. Um, I've had a couple people ask me questions and I don't want to give them wrong um, information. What would be the best phone number that I could share with them that they could speak with you about coming in at some point this summer? Um, right now, probably my wife. Um, but you got to keep in mind that she has disability and can't get to the phone right away. They can leave me a message if they want, but most of the time I'm either outside or on equipment where I'm not stopping what I'm doing to answer the phone. So her phone is the best, but sometimes she can't get to it fast enough to answer it. And if they don't leave a message, we're not calling them back because there's too much spam phone calls out there that we don't want to deal with. So and what number is that? 219 405 Five three two two. Five three two. So it'll be at least the end of June before you accept any campers to be brought in. Well, no, we can start bringing um, seasonals in um, right now. However, we have five sites left. I I'm not sure. Depending on how this COVID thing goes. Um, the restrooms may not be open at all, which means no tent campers, 
and probably no overnighters either. Okay. Thank you. Needs. Thank you. Just to, just to protect, I mean, I got to do what I can to help people protect them from themselves. Go ahead. Very good. You know. Yeah. All right. That, I want to make sure we're doing everything that's, you know, in guidelines with what the governor has out there and, and uh, go from there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Larry. All right. Excuse me. Could I ask Larry one more question? Uh, sure. What are what what days and hours do you actually open this campground? I mean, when when did you first start letting people in? Isn't it closed for the winter? It is closed for the winter. Okay, yes. that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I asking? come I come in here early because I live in Valpo. Okay. I've got a self-contained unit, so I come in here early and I start working on things, cleaning things up. Um, it depends on the weather. I could be down here in in February, early February. You know, usually I try to get down here in March because there's a lot of work to do down here. You know, you, sure can't, you just can't open up a campground willy nilly. You've got there's a lot of work that needs to be done yes. year to year. So I come down here and and I do have some people that are from out of town that they come down here for the weekend and they help me out. But again, they're using their self-contained campers. Nobody, nobody's spending the winter here. So when when are when do you normally open for business? I normally open for business when I turn the water on. This year, the water was turned on just before April first. I think the week before, um, the first of April. So normally you open April first. I can't even say that because I normally open on May 1st is what I tell everybody because I don't know whether or not I can have the water on or not. But as soon as I have the water on, then we have sanitation and then we can go from there. All these people that are in here have self-contained units. Most of them bring onboard water um, when they come in just so, so they've got some place to do their business. Okay. And, and what, what day do you normally close the park for winter? Um, normally October 31st or earlier or after, depending on when the weather dictates, I have to close. But okay. I think the longest I've had the water on that I know of has been um, about the middle of November. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have any new business? The website? <clears throat> the website. Okay. Um, our IT uh, person who is on this call, uh, he's the Stark County Zoom, um, was requested to get three quotes for, a, 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 for the park board for a website. One of them is just um, too crazy. I think it's $10,000, so you might as well X that one right off the bat. Um, and that brings it down to APHIS and to Martin. Martin is the one that does the county's website. Um, APHIS is uh, less expensive. So since Richard's on here, I'd like you to uh, jump on Richard and explain the difference between the two um, uh, quotes. Yeah, uh, the two quotes, they're basic setup. Um, you get your header, your footer, homepage. Um, look at the breakdown here. five basic uh, pages. Sorry about that, let me get this pulled up here. <laughs> So you get your basic page, your information page, your uh... Sorry, I'm looking at the deliverables here. So you get the whole county set up, the uh, 
the hosting site, which with Martin, you, we can cover the hosting on our county hosting site that we're already paying for. Uh, so you're not looking at any additional costs for hosting. Um, you're looking maybe at a small cost of maybe $20 a year for the name itself. Um, that's across the board with any, any person you go to host with, you still got to pay for your, your name server. Um, the bet, the setup includes five basic, uh, five basic pages. Um, And with Atheist, you're looking at additional hosting costs on top of the implementation costs. For both of them? Correct. Okay, now the APHIS is a one-time charge of $1,399. However, any updates uh, anytime you want to update that website, you got to pay for it um, at $100 an hour. Correct. And I'm not seeing that in the Martin website. Is that correct or not? That correct? is correct. Because we already manage all the other websites um, on our host. So I don't mind covering that to save you guys uh, money. It's just general maintenance stuff. It's nothing, it's nothing crazy. Uh, like I said, they're, I think they're covering... Uh, five basic pages and you guys can, you know, critique those pages any way you like. We can always add pages. And it's not going to cost you guys any extra. Like I said, other than the small extra for the name server itself. That one is $3,500. That is correct. So, um, have you had any experience with this APHIS? Uh, a little bit. He does uh, work for uh, the city. Well, what you're getting basically for either one of them is about the same thing. Five pages with headers. Yeah, you're getting a basic setup. Right. Um, and you still have to pay for, uh, we'd have to pay for a hosting charge on the APHIS, but not the, the uh, Martin. That is correct. Martin. But that is a small charge, would you say $20 a year or something like that? Yeah, that you got all you need to pay for is your name. So your domain name, your right? domain name, correct. Okay. Um, but with the APHIS, we'd have to pay for every time there was a change to the website where we would not have to do that with the um, uh, Martin. That is correct. So would you say that uh, the difference between the two primarily is that changes are uh, uh, charged for on APHIS but not on uh, Martin? That's the primary difference? Correct. Hosting it with the rest of our sites, I can maintain them uh, myself and, and keep them up to date. So it would be up to the board. Um, it's on your five-year plan that you that you need to get a website. And um, if you want to do things going forward and try, try to uh, get some grants and, and get some upgrades going, you're gonna have to have a website. Um, and the Veterans Memorial Project is something that is going to need a website. So we can put that on the county's page, um, but it is a park board project. So it just seemed like a good time to bring that up. The question becomes the, the money. And um, I did have a conversation by email with Bruce Wakeland and um, Kathy Carrier. Kathy had been in the forest and uh, mentioned that there was not very much information, and uh, which there isn't. I know when they, they did the uh, upgrade to that, uh, they had talked about an information center where you could put maps and stuff like in that, and then people could pick them up just like at other parks. And then Bruce mentioned that he could uh, dictate a, a, a walk, and it could be put onto the website. So um, I think that would be something nice for the uh, this uh, 
as well. So people could tune into that and listen to that as they walk through the forest, listen to what Bruce's commentary, kind of like when you get those headsets when you go to like uh, uh, Raceland and stuff like that. Um, so it just depends on what you want to pay. If you want a, 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 a less expensive one, which is $13.99 as opposed to, uh, and, and pay for every single upgrade, or if you want to pay the $3,500. Now here's the, the thing. I looked at your finances. There is um, a $5,000 in there in the donation line item, according to Rachel, but she said something about she thought that was for a uh, canoe launch. Kayak launches, yes. Yes. At the at the forest? No, not at the forest, on the Yellow River. Oh. Uh, oh, under the, oh, okay, but under the jurisdiction of the park board. Correct. Okay, so where is that project at? <laughs> not much progress because it's been difficult to find the right of way to put the launches in. There has not been a good uh, site found on the Yellow River to do that. Yeah, the county has a site, but unfortunately, which is actually dedicated for that purpose, but unfortunately, it's not very practical. It doesn't seem to use. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. It has no one's quite figured out how to actually put it to work there. So that that hasn't moved forward. But I will say this about content. Now, I think, you know, uh, on content for the website, I, I think it probably uh, there could be some I would think there's a good chance of getting some funding from the community foundation for, you know, if we had the website for developing some quality content. I don't know. I mean, um, I don't know if it makes, I would be hesitant to let the developer, you know, have a hundred dollars every time you make a change to a page that, that you know, Especially that shouldn't, early on. that shouldn't be that hard. I mean, usually what you do with this is you buy templates for pages. They design the template, but you know when you change the content, you don't need to get them involved every time, and that, mm -hmm. that then it's going to discourage updates, which you don't want that. So, in my oh, opinion, no. no, because it it's often untimely as well. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, guess does that make sense, Richard? To you, I mean, do, yeah. Uh, yeah, temp templates are, uh, with Martin services, they, they build their own site, but they're, um, as far as the baseline for the, the templates that he builds himself, um, they're easily upgradable and he, we can easily manipulate them. And the nice thing about with what Martin builds out is, uh, it, you don't have to worry about templates expiring. And if there was an update to a site, it could crash the current template that you're using. Um, so you gotta, you gotta factor all that stuff in when using just a general website um, thrown together like that. No, no, I understand that if you buy the design from them that there might be some technological changes or whatever later that are gonna require. And maybe you right. have to go back, you might go back to them and then pay them, but not every time you wanna change, we're, we're gonna have a walk no. on Thursday. You know, no, no. I understand the design issues and you know, you need a, you need a webmaster for that really, you know. Yeah. So I guess it's up to the park board what you wanna do, but uh, of course, if you're gonna do, you know, choose one of them, you have to figure out how you're gonna pay for it. Yeah. Um, and the only other source of money you have is through the forest. And I'm wondering if Bruce would be willing to uh, provide a little bit of that money, not the whole thing necessarily, but would he be willing to provide a small amount of that towards the website? Uh, yes, That this sounds like exactly the purpose for that fund. Okay, good. And, and, and uh, I've already and I've already written a three-page uh, dot, uh, dot text for a guided tour that starts at the parking lot and goes all the way a half mile, and and it's um, it's both history and and nature, and, and so okay. that can be used through a website either by them somebody reading the text, you know, accessing it on the website, or it could be a recorded audio that they would pause it there were six stops on that tour that people could take. So those were the two ways that I saw it. And that's written and ready to go. Okay. Whenever uh, we did it. Um, 
So Marty, I know you know a lot about uh, this kind of thing. What are your thoughts on, on are you, are, would you be satisfied with Martin, do you think? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, wait, Richard, either one would work, right? I mean, uh, which one, which one do you think is better? I think the uh, Martin service is going to save you guys money in the long run. I mean, that's who you're using now, right? Correct. I mean, and you're happy with them, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, I guess that kind of means a lot. You know, there's no re if you're going to be hosting it on the same website, you're happy with them. It just seems like that, you know, I mean, it, it, I don't know. Why change, yeah. right? And the county's already covering the security and the hosting and everything, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So. Yeah, that seems like a clear choice to me. I don't know. So my... I Knowing that is 3,500, Bruce, how much would you feel comfortable contributing towards the cost of that uh, website? You're, 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 you're muted, Bruce. You're muted. You're muted. I, you're, you, you have to unmute. Oh, there you go. Okay. It would be used for other other purposes other than just the forest. Right. right. Yes. So, yes. Uh, all of it wouldn't be appropriate, but... but uh, Whatever I don't know what the what a reasonable ratio would be, but as long as the park board thinks it's reasonable, I would say go for it. I, I don't know how how many other properties there really are, and and how much use. But I th I think we that there's a especially in the last few months that there's there's an increased use of the forest, and and I get, I'm getting a lot of questions about that. So that, that they need something like. That. And and I could print them up and put them in a little box out there on the on the on the entrance, uh, which I'm ready to do. But uh, I think it would be better if it was available through an internet site. Well, and those those things could typically for parks, as we've all seen, typically they have those kind of things as PDFs on the on the website that you can print yourself and. In, you know that that's kind of, or sometimes people just don't even print; they just look at about look at them on their phone and then save the paper and all. And that, um, that's what I'm thinking we should do. And it's already written. It's just a matter of you guys saying this, here it is, let's print it up or get it on the website. Bruce, were you the one I was uh, speaking with about the audio recording? Yes. yes. Okay. Do you um, have, do you, did you say you had some of that prepared already? It's all ready to go. It's three. Even audio? Four. It's six stops. It's, um, it, it starts at the parking lot and that's the first stop, and the last stop's a half mile back into the property. Bruce is an excellent storyteller. I've I've, I've gone to the Wild Rose Moon when he was telling stories, and he's he's really good at it. Actually, I, his story about the uh, uh, about Chestnut Ridge is a classic. I, I'm anxious to do it. I enjoy it. Well, I uh, I might be going out a little on a limb here, but I think if Bruce would uh, be willing to put some money up. I have, um, I would feel very comfortable going to the commissioners and asking them to pay the difference. Sure, um, and, and the way the, the, way the, the original uh, trust was written, uh, that final decision is, is, is the county's. I appreciate you asking my permission and advice, but, but technically it's, it's up to the commissioners. Well, I'd want but you my, to be... But it, what we're talking about is totally in line with the original intent. Well, I would want you to be comfortable with it. So... I am. Um, that's why I uh, asked you first before I just jumped on it and went to, the, to my fellow commissioners to talk to them. But I am willing to um, uh, uh, get it funded, the remainder. If you'll put some up, Absolutely. I'll... I think I'd get the county to come up with the rest. I, um, I'm not going to swear to it, but I'll, I, I think I can persuade them to do that. It, but number one. It, and number two, I heard Marty say something about um, uh, the community foundation maybe making a grant. Well, but I know I they, they like parks projects and this is, you know, and they, and they, I think they want to see some of this kind of thing. And this is very modest. And in fact, I've talked to Jessica Martinovich before about this and she pretty much said, sure, fine. You know, so I'm pretty sure now she's off on maternity leave right now, but I would be happy to ask her if they could find a little because this is very modest. You know, I well, think I think they'd be able to participate in this. Well, either that or I was also thinking when uh, when this project was done, I know Rick uh, Rissler priced out an information board like you see in the parks. And I can't remember how much that was, but I'm wondering if maybe we should 
if 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 Bruce and the county can fund the uh, website, if we can ask the community foundation for a grant to fund it, that information center that we had originally wanted to do but didn't have enough to do and for that. And then Bruce can put uh, his uh, pamphlets and stuff in there for folks too. What do you think about that, Marty? Well, that's, I mean, I think that's a good package. That's, that's, basically, those are things we just, we cut out because we, our funding wasn't quite sufficient to do it, right, Rick? I mean, that was in yes. there, but- it, I just, think it was about had to, 15, it was 1500 to $2,000 for the kiosk. And it was a good one that would be su substantial. I, I would just add to the, we, since we're talking about the forest uh, savings account, um, it's got somewhere around $20,000 in it. And so the, the money's certainly there. And, and, and when, when the county and Kathy, you were on the board uh, and the commissioners at the time, right. the county originally accepted the class, the county for us, you had me draw up a, a proposed future budget. And those are tricky, you know, it's hard to see into the future, but I would just say, I'm very pleased that right. I've been watching it and we're very definitely on course to keep with that budget. If anything, the original budget I submitted was conservative. Uh, as it's turning out, you know, can I do watch these things over time? So I'm very pleased about that. Yes. Uh, those trees. Well, I know it's, and I do no, know it's being exactly. used more and more too, because um, I've been seeing lots of posts on Facebook it is. and where people have, I've been to the forest today. We did this at the forest. Oh gosh, that, that forest is really nice. So yes, it is being used a lot more. Yeah. I was yeah. out there, we got beavers again, and I was out there this morning tearing out a beaver dam and Mark Crom high school science teacher was out there with his binoculars and camera doing birding. And, and he's not the only one that's taken a lot of photographs. There's a couple artists from Heartland at, and, and, and Plymouth that takes a lot of photographs out there. So a website, we could load it up with some beautiful photographs. Well, let me, let me catch up as the dumb guy here. <laughs> are we talking $3,500 or are we talking $5,500? I mean, Rick said something about $2,000 for a kiosk and then we're $3,500 for the website. Well, we're talking about a couple, two projects, basically. Yes. $3,500 for the website right. and the $1,500 to $2,000 for the information kiosk that would be placed in the parking lot there. So my thought was uh, on the website, if part of the money came from the forest uh, reserve, I would go to the commissioners and ask them to pay the difference, which mm -hmm. I think I could be fairly persuasive at that. Okay. Um, and I mean, I can't guarantee it, but uh, I'm pretty persuasive when I decide. So. Um, well, and <laughs> my brother's laughing here, so... <laughs> Me too. Um, so, um, and then the kiosk, I, I thought maybe we could ask the um, community foundation if they would provide us a grant to buy that and install that. So the cost to the park board would be whatever Bruce felt was uh, appropriate for to for the web for the website. The rest of it would come from different uh, different pots of money. Right. Okay. And, and Kathy, you're planning on having you're planning on having like a module on there about the veterans memorial, yes, yeah. right? I mean that's going to be very popular, and we and and, and so right. this, this is something that we want to have we want to have out there, you know, it, timely with this thing coming online, right? Yeah. Yes, it would have the forest on there because that's one of the major attractions we've got. It would probably, uh, uh, some of these things that the stellar committee is doing, I would think could be on there um, as well. Maybe we could have a page devoted to that for, because they're all park improvements that you're talking about, Marty, right? Um, a page for the veterans project, because that is a park project and that is uh, really getting off the ground and that will uh, be a very big thing over the course of the summer and into veterans day. Um, and you know, the beach, maybe the trails, you, you know, the trails well, in particular, the, the project at Bass Lake, uh, for the trailhead is yeah. a county, you know, is on county land essentially. So that that's going to be, uh, another one that we're going to want to have, uh, information about. Exactly. So we could, you know, come up, we could have the park board could have a little committee of what they wanted to have on there. I, 
uh, maybe Rosie and I could uh, talk about that because uh, I have been snagging her into some of these other little projects with me. So, uh, you know, we could kind of come up with yeah. what the pages should be in that and uh, uh, we'll work with the, you know, the park board have to approve them, but. Um, yeah. Bruce, can you give us a, uh, a dollar figure that you're comfortable with? Well, you've mentioned other uses and you know, a couple thousand would be no problem. That sounds proportional. I, I, I don't really know what proportional is. <laughs> well, how about this, Bruce? Um, just a thought, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dick, but because um, I saw your light come on. Um, the cost of the uh, website is 3500 So uh, if you paid half, that would be uh, 1750 which is a little bit less than 2000 yeah. I think I could get the county to pay the other half. That, that sounds completely reasonable. Okay. Would you like a motion on on this? Sure. Yes. I mean, should we do it in two motions for each one, or can we combine it? Two. Two, two, two okay. motions. Well, I'll make a motion that we choose the Martin for the uh, internet and that the financing would be taken, possibly taken care of with half from the uh, uh, forest and a uh, possibility of the commissioners doing the other half. I will second that motion. Okay, all in favor of using Martins, say aye. 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 And all in favor of financing it with 1750 from the forest fund and hopefully the remainder from the county. Uh, say aye. 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 Okay, both motions have passed. Okay. And then on the kiosk, um, would the park board be interested in seeing if the uh, community foundation would fund that with a grant? I think that'd be a great idea. Absolutely. Okay, I, uh, having done one for the uh, Veterans Memorial, I know how to do those too, so. Yeah. I can ask Jessica if that's, because I talked to her about some of that, some of this before, I can ask a reminder that you're working on it and get, bring her up to date and see what she has to say. Okay, so I'll wait for you to let me know what, what to make a move on that, Marty. Great. Uh, Kathy, on the Veterans, uh, where are we on that right now? Um, well, I tell you, it's very exciting. Um, we were anxious. We had not done any fundraising, basically, other than, you know, through private conversations, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, while the stay at home order was in effect, we did not think it was appropriate. So, but I had made some contacts with, you know, a, a few folks. And uh, we have continued to receive bricks, you know, brick orders for the veterans uh, that I've passed on to the community foundation. Um, and I made, I guess I could announce this. I mean, every, I know the park board's aware of it. I did make an application um, for a uh, $50,000 matching grant. Uh, we're still working through the process of that. Um, it's not approved yet. I hope it is approved um, because I believe that we could uh, have a, a whole lot better chance to raise 50,000 than 100,000. So um, um, with, with the, and then the mat, with the match and that will be sufficient to get us through the end of this project. Um, the, I will tell you Friday, I met with uh, several folks from the building trade union um, and much, and I had talked to them about this before, and because uh, through um, the Democrat Party, I had met um, a lady that was in, uh, a multi-state representative for this uh, steelworkers union, and they had been sending monies in. But anyway, we met with the building trades union, and I uh, gave them the information on the Veterans Memorial and uh, had the little video. And much to my surprise, uh, they lined up and started handing me checks. So uh, we, they gave me about $5,000 on Friday. I thought one of them said something about, uh, there was another $5,000 check in the mail, but I haven't seen that yet. 
and they also provided an electrician to do the electrical services for free. That was through the electrical union. Um, and his name is Bob Harper, and he is a resident of North Jetson. And his uh, uh, company is H&T Electrical. Um, and uh, he's going to do all the electrical work on this monument for free. And the electrical union that he belongs to said that they were going to support him and whatever he needed, they provide for him in terms of the fixtures and that. So um, that was very exciting. Um, we do have a couple of local contractors that are uh, willing to do the masonry work and they've been participating with Bob Alloy who has uh, been doing our drawings for this monument. Um, to make sure that that is all uh, up, up to speed. And that is Nathan Chambers and Doug Allen, and there may be some others, but um, those, uh, Doug Allen, I know is um, among the very best in the county. And uh, Nathan is, uh, works for Larson Daniels. So uh, we've got some good masons on there. And I mentioned to the building trades union that we were looking for somebody to lay the memorial pavers, the, their granite pavers that we have been selling. And they said they thought they'd be able to find somebody to volunteer their services to lay those two. So um, it's really coming together well. Um, we still need to continue raising money. Uh, we, but we're, I'm confident that we'll get through that. Um, we uh, uh, did listen with great uh, interest to the governor's uh, reopening Indiana plan. And on the 24th, he is um, allowing crowds of 100 or less to gather, as long as they use the social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. And so our veterans that are on the committee wanted to move forward with the groundbreaking. So we are moving forward with the groundbreaking on Memorial Day at four o'clock in the afternoon on the courthouse square. Um, so there shouldn't be any more than 100 people. That's the maximum the governor's allowing out. Uh, our veterans are in the high risk category. So we, our invitation said, uh, uh, you know, uh, masks are strongly recommended. Social distancing guidelines are, in, you know, will be in place. And um, Jim Pressel will be coming to speak um, that day. And I believe he has an Indiana flag that's flown over the Capitol to present. Uh, Jeff Berg will be a speaker. Mark Smith will be our um, MC. Um, and we will have a check presentation ceremony because we've had some really big donors. And we want to make sure that we recognize those folks. Um, I did. Uh, say that we were going, and I've ordered cakes from Finger Hut, uh, and Finger Hut is donating one of those cakes um, as a contribution to this as well. Um, however, now there's a little bit of a question as to uh, whether or not we should have food because of the uh, virus and, and uh, the need to wear masks, et cetera, et cetera. So we may not have that. I may have to cancel that order. But um, the, we have shovels. I bought some shovels and Nathan Chambers uh, painted them gold. So we do need the park board to come. This is a park board project and uh, we're, Jamie Getz is going to take pictures and she has donated her services for this as well. So we'll have it commemorated and uh, it will be a very nice ceremony and then the, the uh, uh, work will begin shortly thereafter. Uh, the stone is, uh, the black uh, granite stone is on its way here. It's uh, due to dock into Miami, uh, I believe Mark Smith said on the 22nd. It will travel up the coast to Barry, Vermont, where it will be carved. And then those stones will be trucked into Stark County. And uh, we have a crane from JCI Bridge Group, Rick, Rick Ritzler sir, uh, got that for us. And they will, uh, place those stones on the prepared site. And uh, that's scheduled to be sometime around mid-October. So we are on target. Um, we're confident about raising um, all the money that we need for this project. And um, we're very excited. Very good. Sounds great. Thank you for all the work you did on this, Kathy. Yeah. Absolutely.
You're welcome. It's uh, certainly been, uh, it's, it has been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work, but um, um, I've enjo enjoyed it and I've got a good team. I uh, uh, have been, I've recently been telling people that my superpower is uh, recognizing who I need to have on my team and then getting them on my team so so we can make things happen. So, uh, and uh, Rick has been helpful with that as well. And I've gotten Rosie in on a few things and uh, the Community Foundation, I cannot thank them enough in the VFW. They are, they are two largest donors. And uh, um, I don't think people realize how important the uh, Stark County Community Foundation is to this to our community. So they've been wonderful. Very good. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I'd like to just ask one question. Um, sure. We normally start doing water samples for the lake two weeks before the beach opens. Seeing as we're not going to open until probably July 4th, is that still a requirement to do? The water samples for the safety of the lake or do i need to ask bose about that yeah you probably should ask bose i would think yeah. i'm what just trying to find out when we when we're going to have to do it if we're not going to open up right away if it's even necessary to do i don't know what do you think rick i i, I would be more comfortable if bose made that decision he he yeah. handles that so i think he would be the right person to contact yeah, I'll, right, give, I'll give him a call okay very good anything else i'd entertain a motion to adjourn i will make that motion i will second the motion all in favor aye aye, aye. we are adjourned thank you all good night everybody all right